this is the between part 10. I want to do a little bit of uh, recapping. We don't have Brian today, so we don't have Dr. Tagore. Um, but it's okay, we're at a good. The nice thing about the between is characters can just be doing whatever on various phases. You don't have to explain it. <laughs> it just it just is. Um, I want to go through the characters though. We did a, a fair amount of like, we actually did kind of like an interesting, I, I just watched the Stars and Wishes from last time and we did a really quite deep like, this is what I want to see for my character kind of discussion last time. And so I don't think we have to do that again, but it might be worth highlighting just a couple of things as we kind of go through. And so starting with Willoughby, I see that you currently have the conditions, the sons of another world, which has continued to be a, a big driver of your character's story, which I think is fascinating. And you, um, I take a look at your moves. Oh, memory is a servant. Did you do that last time? Um, I think that I couldn't think of another object. I was just really keen on getting the fig's giant knife. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we did do that though, right? Like, isn't that? We did. Do you have that, right? Yeah. I do. Um, cool. Good. Yeah. Um, I. I think Willoughby's story is super interesting right now. And I think we, we discussed last time that this idea of Willoughby at being almost like at a crossroads, especially like with regards to, uh, to Alexander and sort of like what that relationship is like and where it's going. Um, and so I just want to kind of highlight that again because I think it's interesting and it's worth kind of seeing where it goes. Um, with Alexander, you currently have the condition drained and you've only got two more advancements left to take. So you are getting pretty close to maxing out your character as far as that goes. Um, that means you have a ton of room to lean into the reflection if you want. <laughs> so um, that is a thing. Um, the really interesting thing about Alexander right now to me is like, I think I want to know, I definitely want to see more Mask of the Past on Alexander. I feel like we haven't gotten like, I want to get like more of that story. That story just feels like really important. I want to kind of get more of it. Um, so I think we should look for opportunities to do that. That's my feeling anyway. And I also, think you, think, I also so. think you should do Giveth and Taketh away more too. I think, I think you should be more aggressive about that. What were we going to say? Just throw all the terrible things at him. Yeah, absolutely. And Mr. Turner, you have most beloved, and that's never going away. And you also only have two more advancements remaining. And you are also pretty close on your masks as well. You only have three more marks on your Janus mask that you can do. Um, so we are definitely reaching a, a critical point with Mr. Turner, which I think is fascinating. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's so, oh, a reminder that for the witch's cupboard, everybody can use that. And I think there's like, um, I think there's like three more uses of that if people like ever just want to get something out of there for a move or whatever, it's something you can do. Um, okay, let's talk about the threads. So the Waitley camera. We currently have one, two, five clues on the Waitley camera. There's just one question, which is how do you cause, or like how, how do you get the camera to work to cause it to where people disappear when they're photographed with it? And that opens up two opportunities. Uh, reverse the process to bring Penelope Levy, the actress, back from wherever she is, and or um, use the camera to transport yourself to the other world and make contact with the entity there. The first one allows you to resolve the threat. The second opportunity, I believe unlocks a custom move, but let me confirm that. It does, it unlocks a custom move void walker. So that's just something to keep in mind. And that's for everyone, it unlocks four. And we have five clues there. I'm not gonna read through them, but just be aware of them. 
Fig's Pigs is pretty close to being finished. You just have to figure out what did La Hortensia Fig lose that she's trying to recapture or remember, and that will allow you to find and then uh, capture or destroy her. You have a plenty of clues to do this. You've still got like five clues left, so you could totally answer that and get that one knocked out. And then the Creature of Cremorne Gardens um, is probably the one you're least ahead on at this point we're still on the threshold question there, which is, is the creature real or is it a hoax? And you have four clues currently for the creature of Kremlin Gardens. So that is where the threats stand. And then with a the mastermind, you have unlocked, uh, you have 10 mastermind clues, which means there's just one final layer to that, which is facing Theodora and taking her down. So that's sort of where we're at with that. And we got a lot of mastermind story last time uh, we had great scene at Brathwaite Hall with her new ally and servant, or however we're going to describe it. it me mechanically, it's their servant, but they're, they seem more like allies, uh, which is the Limehouse Lurker. And, um, and we got to see a little bit more of her plan, which seems to be just to like sow terror and chaos among the royal family. So that's intriguing. Um, any questions or any other thoughts before we continue? Okay, in that case, I think we're on a, oh, go ahead. Did you have something, Sarah? Oh, I was just about to say what I think you were just about to say, which is, did we, we're on a dawn phase starting, I think? Uh, I think we're on a day phase. We did the dawn phase we last finished time. Dawn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're starting with the day and a casual, languid, languorous day phase, I think is in order, especially after all that killing you all did last night. Um, I'm gonna go around the table and just find out what everyone's interested in doing. So Mr. Turner, what do you think? I would be interesting or interested in wrapping up figs, pigs, if people have a notion and it sounds like Willoughby does in the chat. <laughs> so maybe solving that and then going after her or something. Or we can only do that at night though, right? Yes, this, yeah. Because it's the opportunity that will resolve the entire threat, it can only be done during the night phase, which means you have to okay. answer the question beforehand. So now is the time, I guess, if you're gonna do it. Um, yeah. And you got plenty of clues. So I don't think you really need to go investigating that one anymore yeah and then otherwise maybe the cremorne gardens yeah there's a lot to do there still um mr genadius what do you think what do you think i was also thinking the cremorne gardens it'll give him something maybe a little more uh a chance to recover a little more than a waitley camera might yeah i think that's probably pretty good and Willoughby? I think a relaxing walk amongst the waterfront is exactly what I need because I'm still, uh, well, or would the seaside make me? No, that's fine. It, it'll be a fun time. We'll go bowling. <laughs> See if La Hortensia is still holed up in the back of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling she's not, but. <laughs> um, okay, good. So Cremorne Gardens it is. That sounds great. Let's let's just remind, just as a reminder of sort of this place, since it has been a minute since we've been there. This is a pleasure gardens. This would have been a the equivalent of like a theme park um, back then. It's mostly just like beautifully manicured lawns and gardens and things and hedge mazes. Uh, this one has a gigantic dancing uh, platform where at night uh, people dance, like literally thousands of people can be on it dancing at once. And um, there is also, uh, we have so many things. There is uh, the bowling saloon, there's a banqueting hall, there's a promenade, the hedge maze, which we've seen quite a bit of already. Uh, there's the, the little neighborhood next to it, which is chain, uh, chain walk. And then, uh, yeah, and then there's also, um, there's like a hot air balloon that goes up periodically. We have tightrope walkers. We have Greco, the second-sided boy. There's a lot to do here. And so I think we'll just sort of um, 
kind of just begin with a bit of a um, let's just say that you're all there, you have arrived, and it's a very pleasant afternoon. Um, I think we still have the mask of revelry in play if somebody wants to use that as a jazz mask. I think that's still, or no, that's the one, we did that one, didn't we? We did that one. And that's the one where you have to describe the last time you had fun. <laughs> and so I guess I'll just start with Mr. Gennadios. What do you do? I think he will be, I don't think anyone will have really seen him at the, the house for the last little bit. He's been recovering in his chamber. But uh, today, I think he's going to stay along the outskirts of the, the dancing platform, watching more than participating, but happy to be seen. Okay, Mr. Turner? We're here for the fish monster ostensibly. So, um, and do we know this bit about the creature luring them with a song? Yes, that was in the story. Um, that, that, that's, that's been in the rumors that like, people have been lured to the pier and into the water even by this song, but it could just be hysteria. It may not be real. Would it be possible? I'm sure we have like a phonograph at the place. Could I take ours to this place and kind of set up near the pier and play um, some other kind of record, whatever it sort of plays? I want to play something discordant that would like piss it off or something. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting way of doing uh, information move. I'm into it. Yeah, I think that'd be intriguing. Uh, Sure. Okay. And what about just you? Just imagine the modern day version of that of somebody schlepping their laptop to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, will it be, what are you going to do? Um, I think I might help Mr. Turner set up the device um, just because I think you're going to need help carrying it. <laughs> um, and then since I have been through some of the areas at some point perhaps standing behind Alexander, watching him watch people, I get frustrated and I go off again to maybe the second-sided boy, maybe the bowling alley, I'm not sure yet. Okay, let's start with Mr. Genadius. So you were just hanging out by the dancing platform, right? And during the day, this time of day, it's, there aren't really like people dancing. It's mostly just like a place where people are hanging out, right? Um, and milling around. And you're approached by a woman who has, um, a, uh, I've described it as a fabulous fascinator on her head, a uh, beautiful little feathery confection on her head, a glass of wine in her hand. And she comes up to you and says, I know everyone who comes to Kremlin Gardens and I've never seen you. Perhaps you haven't been looking hard enough. Oh, I can't imagine I would miss you. You cut quite a striking figure. Kind of puffs up a little bit, feeling better already, and goes, yes, well, I tend to stick to the shadowy places. Mm. Well, that's not what I do. I consider myself something of a bon vivant, and I love Cremon Gardens. Although lately, attendance is down um, because of these rumors of a fish monster. It's very preposterous, but if there was such a thing, I would have seen it. And if there were such a thing, surely it wouldn't be dancing. No, no, certainly not. No. Do you like to dance? I've been known to. Oh, I know all the new dances, the polka, the Portland, the Boston, but the Viennese waltz is how I made my reputation with this set. Have you heard of the tango? South American, very dramatic. I have. I've been known to dabble myself. Well, when the band gets here in an hour or two, we should, we should, uh, we should take a twirl. My name is Albertina Welk. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Alexander. Albertina and Alexander. Hmm. 
I like that. Albertina, you claim this fish person is preposterous, but knowing everyone here, surely you've seen someone suspicious lurking around if there were such a, a person? Make the information move with presence and see how you, how you do. Uh, that's nine. Uh, do you want to take it with advantage? You'll get to mark your, you have to mark reflection, but I think she's definitely taken by your appearance for unquenchable thirst. Oh, uh, sure. Oh, no, you actually don't have to scar your reflection, only when you heal. Never mind. But in any case, uh, you can take it at advantage. So. All right, uh, that will make it 10. <laughs> Let me take a look at the clues. Uh, we'll just cut the scene right there. So Mr. Turner, uh, Willoughby helps you set up and I'll leave it up to Willoughby whether Willoughby's still on scene or not, but I think you're there. And your plan is to play music out into the ocean or into the Thames in order to possibly rile up the creature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Um, take the information move with reason. Let's see how that goes. And I, I bumped up that stat last time from a minus one. Hey, <laughs> I'm very reasony. 10, five, five. Nice. Let me take a look. Willoughby might turn to Mr. Turner and just in an eye rolling, gagging sort of obnoxious mood, point out yet another clinger on <laughs> to Alexander. Obviously they just keep throwing themselves at him. <laughs> Who couldn't though? Well, there's that. The fascinator has become the fascinatee. <laughs> As always, too droll, Mr. Turner, too droll. You're playing this music and it goes for a bit. And eventually you see something on the water. There's a bubbling, and then once the bubbling subsides, all that's left on the water is a thick slick of vibrant green slime. That's your clue. Do we go out and collect it in a jar for later? You can if you <laughs> How want. How much of a clue yeah. is it? <laughs> you can collect it if you wish. Yeah, it's up to you. It wouldn't be too hard. You'd have to wait in, but that's okay. I have no use for it. It just seems like as a clue, we should have a jar of it on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so Willoughby, what are you up to right now? Well, uh, fascinated and somewhat repelled by the goo, perhaps chatting with Mr. Turner on the shore, we might be able to answer the first question of the fish monster. We could do some theorizing because with that goo and the severed fish heads and, you know, I, I don't know if we know if it, the creature is real or not, but maybe we could postulate a little bit. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, is is this a time period where we could be playing Edith PF to it? No. Ah. No. no, a little early for Edith PF. Foiled uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> let me give um, let me give the clue to um, let me give Mr. Uh, Genadios's clue just because that could be helpful for the answer a question overall. Um, so you had basically asked her, what did you ask her again, Mr. Genadios? 
uh, whether she has seen anyone suspicious looking lurking around. Mm. And mm -hmm. give me a moment. She says no, but lately, women and a few men have had jewelry go missing. I myself was wearing a beautiful necklace with amethyst and pearl and at some point during the dance, it just was gone. And there have been rumors of jewelry going missing lately. I think this is another reason why Kremlin Gardens is getting something of a bad reputation. I don't know if there's a connection, but certainly it implies that there is something fishy going on. How clever. Surely no uh, undersea denizen would require that much decoration. No, I couldn't say, but I'm curious I why you're so curious. I have acquaintances who are very, very interested in getting to the bottom of this mystery. And I like to help where I can. Hmm. Intriguing. Not Scotland Yard, I hope. Do I look like Scotland Yard? <laughs> no, no, not like any detective inspector I've ever seen. Not that I have a chance to talk to them too often, of course. I've spoken to them more than I would have liked to. Bit of a troublemaker then, are you, Alexander? I have a history, let's say. Well, I like a dangerous man. I do bring trouble, just be aware. And we'll cut back over to Willoughby and Mr. Turner. How do we feel about, do you all want to try to answer a question on this, uh, the creature at this point? Yeah, let's do it. So this will be kind of a little out of character. We can assume that you've all conferred with each other or whatever. Um, who has a theory? The question is, is the creature real or is it a hoax? I want it to be real. We all need a little lagoon in their life. Well, uh. that's great. Does, <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have if an alternative, clap, alternative <laughs> thought or do you have a theory? I, I actually like the suggestion of werefish monster. It's it's both a, a hoax during the day and an actual thing at night. Oh, intriguing. We'll start making the case. I think this is, this is interesting. What do we think? Let's make the case here. The thefts of jewelry and the hastily discarded clothes certainly lends itself to the idea that somebody is lingering around like, like a street person or something yeah. sure there's yeah. somebody living in the area perhaps or um you know perhaps when they became the werefish monster that is when they had to quickly discard their clothes as the gills started to come up over their head <laughs> or it could be a new act at this place or something like a, a new person has come and with them comes troubles or something oh interesting like they planning on working at the horrors of the deep exhibit mm -hmm. so carnival folk <laughs> yeah i like the idea of they're stealing jewelry just for like subsistence mm -hmm. and they they must live somewhere nearby perhaps they're homeless or whatever and that explains the clothes because they have to hastily discard them once they make the change and the hedge maze would be a good place to hide if you were like we're having something like that happen that's where the clothes were found they eat the fish yeah the severed fish heads what do we think about that 
They're just hungry. Okay, so they're just like eating. In the evenings, they just they just discard them on the beach because they're sitting there like eating a corn on the cob except raw fish. That's <laughs> very good. <laughs> what about the dorsal fin seemingly torn off? Seems when they to be change awesome. back. When they change uh, back, it just sheds off them. Oh, uh, gross. That's interesting. I like yeah. that. I like that. Um, Drew, what about the slime or the horrors of the deep exhibit that Madame Tussauds is planning? I was thinking that the the dorsal fin and the slime were someone from Madame Tussauds trying to drum up this this creature to draw people away to their exhibit. Oh, so we think and that's that... why we, that's why we see it during the day because the monster is not actually there. Someone is making it look like they are. Oh, interesting. So Madame Tussauds, is, does Madame Tussauds know about the creature then, or is this just like? Uh, they are taking advantage of the rumors. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. Intriguing. I'd like it. I'd like it more if she did know and she was trying to capture it for the the show or something. Yeah. Little did she know it could be one of her employees that got hired <laughs> on before the exhibit. <laughs> Indeed. Intriguing. Intriguing. Um, okay, so we've got. I think we're pretty solid on the fish heads, the clothes, and the jewelry going missing. Um, we, th The thing is, the slime appeared after the phonograph music was being played, though, and we saw it bubbling up. So I don't think that could have been done as part of a hoax by Madame Tussauds. That would have been, I'm not sure how they would have pulled that off. Uh, it couldn't possibly be ineffectual as well. Or it could be a jar buried in the silt that someone with a long string pulled the lid off of. <laughs> yes, that's pretty good. There's just Do an we, intern under the water somewhere waiting for anybody. We to can add that music. context. <laughs> we can add that context that there was a jar found with a string attached to a string. It's kind of intriguing. I like that. Um, okay, so then we think that... Um, okay, interesting. So let's review. We're saying, it looks like we're using all six clues here. We're saying that it is a werefish creature that transforms at night and during the day is like a vagrant sleeping or staying in and around Cremorne Gardens. At some point, Madame Tussauds decided to take advantage of the rumors and so they've been kind of stoking it but little do they know that it actually is real. You figured out that it actually is kind of a real thing. Um, and so that's just sort of happenstance that Madame Tussauds sort of like didn't, doesn't really know what they got themselves into, right? They don't know they, don't, they, don't know they stumbled into something real. Opportunistically um, just like selling their business, right? <laughs> Marketing. <yeah>. Interesting. <laughs> well, let's see if you're right. Uh, I think this is a pretty good solid explanation. Let's go for plus two. Whoever wants to roll it, take it away. Sarah hasn't rolled yet, right? I will. I made my dice fight for my affection today. They're all very loving. <laughs> Ooh, 10 plus two is 12. Ooh, nice. Uh, great. So intriguing. Let's read the uh, 12 plus here. On a 12 plus, the mastermind will reveal themselves while the hunters are pursuing the opportunity. So basically, Theodore is going to show up at Cremorne Gardens at some point. Um, that's intriguing. But the question is now unlocked. You are correct. Because it's real, the question becomes, what, what does the creature want? Um, like, what is its basic, like, what are its needs here? Uh, you resolve the threat by luring the creature to you, then destroying it or convincing it to go back wherever it came from, your choice. So that's where we're at with that. That's complexity for. Okay, so 
Great. Um, fantastic. Do you wish to continue doing some investigation while you're here or do something else? Oh, yes. I think we should go search for its grotto. I mean, we think the jar was a plant. And we also think that the creature sheds some of itself when it changes it back and back. forth. Yeah. yeah. Um, a hedge maze is a pretty good spot to linger, right? But I was in and out of all of that the last time I was here. So I think maybe we should drum up clues elsewhere. Thoughts? Sure, yeah. I would, I think that depending on where the fin was and the fish were found, maybe um, looking for when, where the tide might come in close to here or something like that. Is the neighborhood that's near Kremlin Gardens of mm. a certain stature, the chain walk sounds like it's just kind of dockside? Uh, no, it's actually a burgeoning artist community. Um, like, like uh, a lot of like painters and things are moving in, mm -hmm. right? Bohemian? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bohemian, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff painters and other nefarious things. <laughs> yes. Well, it would be a good place to find somebody who maybe is lingering in the area as well, is my thought. So you're going to check out Chain Walk, sounds like? I think, I think I will. Yeah. Um, so Turner, where are you going to search? Or what are you going to do? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to look for something to do with where tides come in or wherever uh, it was reported that the fin and the fish were found, so just like around that area. Pick up a scent. Okay, sounds good. And uh, Mr. Genadius? I think he'd like to perhaps take Albertina to see the second-sided boy. Good. Good, good, good. Um, so I think we're still kind of like in the late afternoon at this point. We haven't reached dusk yet. And Willoughby, you are walking down chain walk when a man on his patio painting something on a canvas sees you and says, and he has an American accent, he says, Oh, forgive me for saying so, but you have a most striking look. Um, would you mind if I did a sketch of you? For context, Willoughby went very roughly with the look today. It's got the parasol with all of the, in, still the top hat for no reason, just because it's, you know, some sort of hat and parasol combination doesn't make sense, but I rock it. <laughs> Um, and the gentleman, does he, what does he look like? He, just... um, he has a head of curly hair. He's handsome in a rakish way. Uh, he's American by his accent. Um, yeah. Well, I have always had a soft spot for creative foreigners. I suppose there's no harm in it. He says, um, please come, come here, uh, come around. I'll, I'll let you in through the front. And he lets you in and takes you back out to the patio. And he says, um, I'm Whistler, James Whistler. Willoughby, just Willoughby. Just Willoughby, how fascinating. Um, well, if you would just um, sit here and he kind of arranges you, right? And um, takes out his pencils and things. He's And I take out my picture. flask, even though I know I'm supposed <laughs> to sit still, I don't. <laughs> he says, um, do you live on chain walk, Willoughby? No, no, no. I um, was here to see the gardens, spend just a lazy day. Have you lived here long? No, no, not long. Um, but I have certainly gotten to know a few of my neighbors, and many of them hate Cremorne Gardens. Too noisy, too many drunkards for their taste. And they work tirelessly to ensure Mr. Simpson will be denied when he tries to renew his license. 
I think they're fools, of course. The gardens are totally original, and the possibility of a sea monster terrorizing the place makes it all the more enchanting. Have you heard that rumor? I have. In fact, I recently observed a bunch of fish heads along the walk as I was on the promenade earlier today. It's thrilling to think of. No doubt the creature leaving its leavings um, along the shore. Though if it's a fish creature who eats fish, that's quite a dreadful proposition, cannibalistic. So many animals are. True enough, true enough. I suppose it's one of the things that separates us from them. And he says, not knowing that you've been hunting cannibals all <laughs> for the past couple of months. Um, and just continues like this for a time. After the first, you know, let's say half an hour, we've gotten out of the pleasantries. We talked about the weather and where he's from in America and where I came from in the countryside. I might start to drop more hints that I am actually uh, tied to the supernatural. I am an investigator, kind of work in some of the mystique of what I do every day with my life, which is chasing fish monsters. Yeah, that might be a good way of getting him to open up about something he might have seen unusual that might interest you. Mm -hmm. um, to information move with presence, see how that goes. Hot damn. Some nice dice today. It's another 10. Nice oh, information indeed. plus or minus uh, something. Presence, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 11. Hold that thought. Mr. Turner, you're on the beach. <laughs> What's your approach here? What are you doing? Um, probably just asking the people working where each of those things were found and then just sort of like <laughs> generating some sort of trifecta or, or whatever of my search area. Triangulating it. Um, okay, uh, take uh, reason, information move. Zero. A eight. All right, hold that thought. And Mr. Genadios. Some dancers have shown up. It's late in the afternoon. The band is there playing a Viennese waltz, which Albertina is very good at. Um, some people are even like, oh, Albertina, this is your dance, da, 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 you know, and so on and so forth. Um, she says, she, she, she will ask if you'll join her for a dance. And then after, maybe you can spirit her away after that. He will, uh, with, with a small amount of hesitation, join. And you do the dance, you know, the cameras circling around you like they do in movies. And when it's all done, she says, ah, well, you are very light on your feet. Alexander. I have had much practice. Hmm. Well, so where to now? Shall we find a secluded spot in the garden? I've heard tell that there is a seer here. Oh I'm yes, like yes, the second-sided boy. Perhaps we should give that a a glance, see what trouble we can find there. I like that very much. And she will take your arm and you can head out to go see Greco. Um, let me come back and do clues real quick. Mr. Whistler says, well, if you're curious about unusual things, Willoughby, I have, well, I have witnessed a few things that I didn't give much thought to until now. The song, I, I've heard it, though I wasn't put under any spell or any such thing, but I remember it. And just yesterday, I overheard a young woman and she was 
whistling the same song. Now, I don't know if there's a connection. Perhaps she's also heard the song and she's just remembered it. But when I tried to get her attention, she took a, it took a moment. Uh, she seemed distracted. Like she was in a trance or a fugue state. Isn't that unusual? It's quite fascinating. And I love the irony in your story because you were noticing the whistling. That's so funny. Uh, mm. An American tune? Say that again. Was it an American tune? Something oh. you remember from your childhood or just something no, you heard? No, no, no. No, 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 recently. no. No, I've heard the song, the alleged song that the creature sings. Mm. It's, it's unusual, strange, otherworldly, ethereal. That is something that I truly am fascinated by. Um, I recently, and at this point I've had maybe just enough brandy where I'm not supposed to be saying all of this to just some random stranger who invited me over to take my picture. Um, but I would start telling him about the sounds I've seen from other worlds as we finish this, maybe pass along the flask. Good. As I, uh, I do kind of use that opportunity to take a look at the uh, sketch as well. Is he any good? He's very good, yeah. Delightful. Very good. Yeah. Um, Mr. Turner, would you roll on your information move? Eight. Eight. Mm, complication. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are searching around the beach and you find washed up perhaps amid some detritus, a piece of scrimshaw and the scrimshaw depicts a fish-like man rising out of the water. What is Scrimshaw? It's like a, um, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's basically like, um, like engravings done on bone or ivory, typically. Uh, sailors were known to do this, like whalers would like carve like images and things like that. This is, uh, uh, the material is unclear, but it, it could be ivory. But yeah, interesting. And that's the clue. That's the clue. Yeah. yeah. And while you, as soon as you touch it, as soon as you take it in your hands, you you hear the song. It is rolling in from the water like a wave and settling into your mind. You have to do the day move to avoid its lure. What are you afraid is gonna happen if you fail? That I'll, I'll be lured into to the water and, and probably drown. <laughs> Indeed, you're going to roll with sensitivity. Let me take a look at your conditions. Oh, you have most beloved. Yes, you're rolling with you're rolling at disadvantage. The song is very powerful. <laughs> I want you? Yeah, I don't think I have anything in my inventory that would help. I throw at a rope. <laughs> okay, so three dice and take the lowest two. But it is sensitivity though, so that's to your advantage. I guess. So five plus sensitivity, eight. You're gonna resist, but I'm going to give you the condition, um, the song. 
just describe how you resist it. Um, I think I start to like even backpedal, like I don't even notice it, but then I see like there's a gentle current that's caressing my torso as I start to move backwards. And I think to sort of break the reverie, I find that I'm digging my hands too sharply into my wrists and there's like a little bit of blood and that's what uh, snaps me out of it. Good. So Mr. Gennadios, you and Albertina Welk step into the tent and the second-sided boy is there. He, he's really like a second-sided teenager. <laughs> um, and he has a, you know, he has like an eye painted on his forehead. And he's sitting at a table with a dark velvet cloth draped over it. And there's a strong smell of incense even before you get inside. And it's very smoky once you get in there. And he says, Welcome, ancient one. Alexander will uh, arch an eyebrow and, and uh, uh, he'll say, surely you know better than to comment on a stranger's age. Age, but age is nothing to you. Isn't that correct? Age is something to us all in greater or lesser degrees. And yet you are here with a comparative babe. Why have you brought her here? I've enjoyed her company. And he'll give her a small smile. And yet, in the long run, your enjoyment of our company will be fleeting at best, a ripple on the water. All one, all one can do is enjoy what the present offers. Goes for me and all. Albertina says, I do not understand this conversation. What is, what is he talking about? I am remarkably well preserved, my dear. And she has a, she seems a little nervous. Um, and she says, well, we're here to have our fortunes told. Indeed. And Greco waves his hand to, for you to sit down. He will hold the seat out for Albertina before sitting himself. She sits down, and then you can sit down. And Greco says, did you know the Pythia? I know a little bit of many topics. And he says, well, ask your question. What would you like to know? I think perhaps the lady should go first. And Albertina leans in and says, I want to know if I am on the threshold of a great romance. And Greco looks at her and says, no. Alexander will, will chuckle a, a small bit and give a, a slight, very innocent shrug. Albertina says, this is foolishness. I can tell there's nothing, there's nothing worth listening to here. We should go. I, I would like to hear what the young man has to say about my future. And Greco says, it is best if only your ears hear it, ancient one. Perhaps so. Albertina, would you mind waiting outside? I won't be long. She gets up in a huff, stomps out. 
and now it's just you and Greco. Mm -hmm. Alexander will lean forward and say, I would appreciate more discretion, my friend. I simply say what I see. I pass no judgment. A loose tongue can cause more trouble than you wish for. What is your question then? I feel that something big is soon to arrive for the city, for me and my acquaintances. What do you see? I see that you are correct. There is one in the city who is even more ancient than you, more powerful than you. I believe we've met. They are as old as the earth itself. And more immediately, the presence here at Cremorn Gardens. What do you see of that? Do information with sensitivity. Six. Interesting. He says, you mean the creature, the fish That's monster. I cannot see it. It, it sings its song and my thoughts of it fade away. Would he see anything were I to put on a mask? Yeah, if you want to. I think I will do a mask of the past. He says, instead, he says, I cannot see the creature, but fortunately, sight is not the only one of my senses that is highly honed. I, smell it and hear it, even when it thinks it can't be smelled or heard. And then he sort of like takes in a breath. And at this point, he says, the smell is very strong indeed coming from the banquet hall. It is a smell that is like the ocean, fishy, briny, but deeper, older somehow. I suspect that is where your creature spends much of its time. And that is information I can use. My thanks. He says, before you go, and he takes your hand and he says, I wish to walk with you in the ancient places. I wish to roam with you. Will you roam with me tonight? There is a cost to a request such as that? 
It's a cost I'm willing to pay. I will meet you here. No, you don't need to meet me anywhere, physically. Just sleep. And I will find you. Intriguing. As you wish. And I think we'll conclude the day phase there. Let's get the desk phase wrapped before we take a break. Do you want to do answer a question first about La Hortensia before we go to desk phase or on the same day? Let's, uh, let's do it if we're going to do it. Now's the time. The question is, what did she lose that she's trying to recapture or remember? You have five clues that you could possibly use, but it's only a complexity two. But the clues are a body whose organs were reversed, a large collection of torn opera tickets. Uh, Lartensia has a collection of fine but worn clothing, a carefully folded length of blonde hair, and a skeletal hand wearing a pearl wedding ring. Those are the clues. The last four probably seem the most relevant, I guess. I'm not sure about the body with the organs being reversed, <laughs> but if someone has a theory, we, go ahead and say it. Did we use up the tattoo from the Turkish, Turkish bass? Because we have a marked as explained, but not used. Oh, uh, that was also used, yep. So you've got, yep, you, you got five. Yeah, because that's how we I, use a sailor. There were sailors that they were going after. I have a theory. Mm -hmm. I think she lost her sister. Okay. I think they Explain. used to attend the opera together. I think all of the clothing she has kept, it was odd to Willoughby as they were investigating to see that both gloves were worn evenly, that sort of thing. And I think it is her sister's wardrobe that she kept trying to preserve a piece of that. Um, we could very easily say that the folded length of blonde hair also belonged to her sister. The question is, is the hand in the basement also hers? Because that would require more explanation. The hand could be La Hortensia's. Maybe they, they ate her arm but left her hand because of the ring. She never had to take the ring off. Crusoe. Yeah. <laughs> this whole threat has been just stomach churning. <laughs> so the blonde hair, the fine clothing, the opera tickets, and we're saying the skeletal hand is La Hortensia's. That's how we're explaining that away, right? Or I don't think it helps with suggestion. this particular clue, right? It was Drew who thought yeah um i mean so, so i mean i think of the relevant like okay explain the opera tickets again the sister just liked to go to the opera is that what the deal was i think that that's what they did together once she was married like that was her night out they got dressed up they would leave and go out and it was a um uh, you know a magical remembrance of a time before she was brewed to a bunch of cannibals i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> So that would be three clues then, the opera tickets, the clothing, and the blonde hair. Uh, what are we gonna say about the other two, if anything? Maybe nothing. Um, the skeletal hand wearing a pearl wedding ring in Fig's basement. I like the idea of that being La Hortensia as, as a way of explaining the clue away, which you'd still get credit mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. um, that would put you at plus two, which is not bad. Um, does somebody wanna take that role at plus two? Or does anybody have a different theory they want to propose? Could the um, organs be reversed some sort of like they were twins in the womb or something like that? And like the it's like a medical condition that she has where like she's, I don't know. So I, I, I wish I knew more about it, but like they were conjoined in the womb but then separated and so she's like got like this weird 
condition with her her, her body now. Wait she a second. Are you saying her. that the, she the was the sister. opposite of her twin, right? Yeah, like they're literally <laughs> beer, beer opposites. So the body would have been of her sister. Or it could just be like La Hortensia making a statement about the sister. Rearranging. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it that's could have been gruesome. Projection. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Though. That's super gruesome. Um, the idea of uh, her sister being her mirror opposite, right? Maybe she's been trying to do a little bit of Doctor Tagore's work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's tr- that's interesting as well. Yeah. Well, in any case, I think it's good. I think that puts you at plus three. Then that's a great opportunity here. Whoever wants to roll it. Yes, I guess Sarah doesn't want to. I don't think I've rolled one of these before, so maybe I will. Go for it. Yeah. Um, a seven plus seven. three. Yeah. Ten. It's correct. And the opportunity is unlocked. Find La Hortensia and then capture or destroy her. Uh, so you can go find her now. Um, and and stop her. So is the sister dead? Seems like that's what we were leaning toward, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're at the dawn phase, or the dusk phase, rather. Do we have any playbook moves or custom moves here that needs to be worked out? Don't think so. Um, I think we're okay on that. Let's do our paint the scene. And this time we're going to be in. The map room. The map room is littered with maps of the city, of England, of the world. And some of them are highly unusual Name one of these unusual maps and describe why it's so strange. Willoughby has been in the map room quite a bit recently because of my otherworldly explorations. And I found a map that is London, but it couldn't possibly be this London. The streets aren't correct or named inconsistently differently. And the Thames is the same river shape, but everything up around it doesn't look right. Other London. The map I'm thinking of is, it looks like somebody has drawn lines on it. That would be um, parallel to certain streets and it would be like the ley lines. Nice. I think that on the wall is perhaps the original uh, Piri Rius map. It is a a map that's very old, uh, supposedly of the world, but it is very odd and uh, either takes some liberties or is not of our world, perhaps. Good. So let's go around the table. Everyone states what they're going to do tonight. No discussion, just state what you're you're going to do. Um, Mr. Turner. I say we go hunt for the last pig. Mr. Gennadios. You're supposed to be roaming with Greco. Yes. Uh, would would I be able to help with that and still be back in time for bedtime? I don't think so. That was my complication, is you're going to have to roam with Greco during the night phase. All right. He shall do that. Willoughby? I'm torn. But I think that I would go and confront La Hortensia, both because I don't want to leave Mr. Turner on his own with her, as he has a tendency to just want wade into the ocean or a 
morgue drawer or you know on at least i think we need to i think we need to drill down a little bit then like mm -hmm. where are you going to go look that's the key you need to come up with a place that fits the theory a little bit perhaps tonight is the opera well that's good and she's yeah. feeling a little yeah. reminiscent mm -hmm. i like it yeah that's good okay so two to the opera one one is enjoying a night of rest no doubt and that sounds good do we have any janice mess prompts that need resolved i do yeah go ahead and read it off and do it uh, narrate a flashback to a scene when the artists destroyed themselves because of my rejection. How did the masterwork change in order to reflect my cold indifference? And uh, so after Alexander flaunted his new lover in front of the artist, uh, he returned to the studio shortly after and found that the artist had thrown himself from the loft of his uh, his workshop into the arms of the statue in uh, a, a violent act of self-destruction. And the statue itself, while it had been looking down at the viewer, now the head was turned away from, from the body of the artist and the uh, veins of the marble uh, became a little red. Nice. Any other chance mask? Is that everybody? In that case, I will introduce the unseen London at night. Uh, do we want to go back to the Grand Guignol, maybe? I don't know. Could be fun. An opera, and an opera, like two different opera scenes. That might be a little too on the nose. I don't have that. We have gone to the Grand. I don't think we've done that one yet. Did I miss some notes? I think we. it was the Baker's Son. Did we do the Baker's mm. Son play? I feel like we did that one. I usually do that one it pretty early. The one you weren't here for. Yeah, you might not be here for that. No, let's go with the cult of the pig. A secretive cult dedicated to the pagan swine god Mok has gathered in a fashionable salon on this holy night to make offerings to their porcine deity. The first is to paint the scene, which is everyone. And then the second will be Razor, then Sarah, then Drew. And let's take a five. I'm okay with gnarly Drew. The cult of the pig. How has this otherwise sumptuously decorated salon been changed to make it a ritual space dedicated to an ancient pagan pig god? Everyone gets to answer. I think they've hauled in various types of stone and arranged it into a specific pattern. Um, that we probably can't understand the symbology there. I think perhaps they've also hauled in, perhaps the rocks are done around this, but there's a big ancient old stump that's been sheared off and set as the altar. And I think before the altar, there is a, a, a mud pit just dropped in the middle there for uh, ritualistic purposes. 
Let's go to the opera. Probably this would be at, I'm thinking, maybe Tavistock Hall, which is where a lot of performances like this might be going on. I'm curious, Mr. Turner, will it be, are you going to go as patrons? Are you going to be sneaking around? What are we thinking? Perhaps Harder Grave House has some long-standing box that we just never like that. Use. Okay, yeah, a box. If is we good. go as patrons, we might see. Mm -hmm. So getting a box, yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I love it. And so you arrive. You take you take a cab there, and everyone is you know, kind of funneling in to the hall. Everyone's dressed in their finery for the night. You will be led to your box, um, no problem. And Mr. Turner, what do you do? You get to the box, then what? It's still before the show. If the, do, did these uh, tickets have ticket um, seat numbers and stuff on them? Well, you have your own box, like a like a balcony thing. So, right. But if the ones that we found uh, had oh. particular seats all of the time, then I'd go searching for those. Oh, I like that. That's really good. Yeah. So you're just like before the show, you're kind of milling down there to see, you know. Yeah, yeah scoping like that. out. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good. That's a good plan. So you are doing that. You're looking around, trying to see what you can see. Willoughby, what are you doing in the meantime? I know one of the chorus personally from my travels and they were a good drinking buddy several weeks ago. We had a wonderful night out. So I'll maybe go into the back of the opera house and the wings and, and chat with the actors and maybe see if I can see a very tall person from the back or if they've maybe seen her at performances previously. Yeah, that's good. So we see you both chatting up and talking and you know and, and you're, we see you doing that in the back back of the house mr turner you're just scoping out the uh the the, the relative location where they usually had their seats and mr Tur mr or willoughby rather willoughby the biggest sort of um uh, the thing kind of going on back there is they've recently had an accident. A rigging fell down and it kind of collapsed and crushed a few of the players and crew people. And this happened sort of like fairly recently, like within the last hour or two. And so there's just a lot of like chaos back there. They're trying to figure out, do they go on with the show? Like, what do they do here? It's, it's a little chaotic. So people aren't really talking much, but we know how La Hortensia functions. She likes to lay traps, right? Um, and perhaps connected to her cave-in trauma, right? She likes to cause things like this to happen. So I'm curious what you do at that point. I am comforting my dear friend Victoria, who is just shook and, and she doesn't know how any of this happened and she's just babbling nonsense. She still is in hysterics over the whole thing and I hand her my flask and I'm, I'm comforting her and then scanning the area in which the rigging would have fallen, whether there are people working there now or if there's like does it look broken? Does it look severed? Does it look frayed? And just seeing any evidence that she might have uh, caused this to happen and from where. And you will be looking around and you will see her. 
up on the catwalk or on the little little upper walkway. She's staring down at you. She knows what you did. She knows Hargrave House is involved with what happened to her sons. You can't get to her right away, but she's there. Mr. Turner, in one of the seats that Lartensia and her sister usually had uh, reserved, in one of the seats there is a box, a velvet gift box, red with the ribbon. It has a tag that says to Hargrave House. What do you do? I ask a small child to open it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll take it and open it. You open it up and there's a viper inside. Mr. Genadius. I'm curious, do you make any special preparations knowing that you're about to do some, allegedly doing some kind of like dream walking or astral plane, astral projection type stuff, whatever you're doing tonight, do, do you, or do you just you know, nod off in your bed? I think not knowing quite what he's in for, he will, uh with a bit of grumbling that Willoughby didn't do this beforehand, he'll he'll get into his finest pajamas and uh, make sure that the room is uh, presentable before getting into bed. Very good. You fall asleep, perhaps? It's a little unclear. But at a certain point, you see Greco sitting in your chair in the room staring at you. He will sit up in the bed and kind of look about and say, that was simpler than I expected. He says, are you ready to roam with me? Is this suitable attire or shall I dress better? You can appear however you wish at any time. Well, in that case, and he'll step out of bed and he will be in his uh, finest attire from about three centuries ago. Hmm. He says, we will have someone joining us on this walk. Oh, and they would be. You turn to see in another chair, Theodora is sitting in the chair. And she's dressed as she would have been dressed when she was a pirate queen. Sort of, you know, blousey shirt, pants. Um, she's got like a captain's hat on, yeah. Well, good evening, lady. It seems you have quite the penchant for finding strange youngsters. <laughs> well, perhaps I do. My daughter is adopted. Did you know that? I haven't had the pleasure to meet her yet. Well, I suspect you will at some point. So where are we going tonight? I believe that is up to our friend here. And we'll cut there. Back to the cult of the pig. Razor, Mok demands a sacrifice of riches. What does the cult offer him? Describe the manner of the offering. I think they've uh, cooked a dish of all the things that a pig would like. So like apricots, zucchini, cooked potatoes, all these things that I find on Wikipedia. And then adorned it with uh, truffles. And I think it's within the mass of a large pumpkin. 
and carve to look like a, their version of what the deity would look like. Interesting. Willoughby, when you see Lauritensia up there staring at you, what do you do? That's an excellent question. <laughs> um, I put Obert's knife in a sheath. I kind of rigged it so I could pull it up from Wonder Woman style, like the back of whatever it was I was wearing. I think that I have my hand around Victoria and I'm still making eye contact with La Hortensia and I just slowly pull out his knife and hold it by my side to see if I can maybe bait her into a moment of anger. Oh, she will be angry indeed. She'll see this. And at first her, her lips turn down in a frown, but then she kind of smiles and she recedes into the shadows above. Mr. Turner, there's a viper in the box. I need the night move. What are you afraid is gonna happen if you fail? I'll, I'll be poisoned. <laughs> Indeed. You will be poisoned and you will die a horrible frothing death in the, at, the, at the show or in the middle of the, the, the audience, the gathering audience. So let's have that night move and you can take it with regular dice. If you have something from your personal quarters or from the cupboard, that would be probably good to use now. Do you think I could use my rosary of tiny animal skulls to try to sort of assert dominance on it or something? Like try to counteract it with a snake charm type thing, but with the rosary? It's an interesting idea. I'd be more convinced if you said you were just going to use it to like grab it or something, you know? Well, I think I have, um, well, I have rope to grab it with maybe. I just think it's a very like, I don't know why you would have brought rope to the opera. It's a very like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a it's a very like, I think there's like a surprise element here, right? So like you'd have to be able to react pretty quickly, whatever you're gonna do. Maybe just use my sword. Okay, like just, okay, like just stab it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm. Um, if you have that to mark, you can mark it and take the roll at advantage. Alrighty. And that is? Uh, We'll say vitality. All right. Oof. <laughs> Three plus one is a four. <laughs> <laughs> How great. The viper strikes. It sinks its teeth into your wrist and begins pumping venom. There's a cry out of people around you when they see this. You clutch your chest as the venom courses through your veins, which are rapidly turning black and crawling up the sides of your face. Your skin is blackening. You begin to froth and foam at the mouth. And you collapse in the audience, quite dead. I think I'll use a Janet's vest. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you have left to do on that? You got two more. You got two more. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Um, okay, mark one, and uh, we'll we'll come back to that in a minute. Mr. Genadius, you are on the prow of a ship, sailing around the islands that you grew up on. And the second-sided boy is to one side, Theodora's to the other side. And the second side of boy says, This is for you, sir. 
what do you hope to find when we come ashore? It's been some time since I've seen my children. Theodore says you have children. I've had my share. Are they as physically blessed as you, I wonder? Some. Uh, very few remain that way. You are quite suddenly walking along a gravelly sand beach towards a villa. What do you do? I assume this is a villa he is familiar with. Yes. In which case he will, I think he'll start walking faster, perhaps even to his own surprise, he is more eager than he expected. The second sighted boy will stop you. Wait. There is another here with us, roaming with us. She brought him. And he'll, he'll look at Theodora and say, the short one. He doesn't like it when you insult him so. No, I don't imagine he would. Tickles me, though. You go around the corner and you see a trail of blood on the white stone. I don't remember this. Greco says, no, it is new. With a pit in his stomach, he will start rushing to the, the door to the villa. There is blood oozing out from underneath the door, fresh. Slowly, he'll open the door. I want you to do the night move. for keeping your calm, for keeping your nerve. What are you afraid is gonna happen if you lose your, lose your, lose control here? Somehow his memory of his, his first set of children will be forever this. Yeah, I think it's worse than that. I think that Whatever's doing this will seek to eliminate any and all monuments to you. All right. So that's, uh, sorry, composure? Composure. And that's a 12. I was going to make you roll a disadvantage because it drained. Oh, okay. That's in eight. We'll come back to it. The cult of the pig. Sarah, Mock demands a sacrifice of status. What does the cult offer him? Describe the manner of the offering. The followers come dressed in their finest and their clothing is always just pristine and this is also perhaps more towards the upper crusted level of people who have formed this cult so i'm imagining that they slowly start taking off their medals and sashes indicating their lordship or ladyship or their jewels and then eventually start shedding their clothes them and all together until they are completely naked and all of their adornments are just piled on the stump. Well, 
Willoughby, Lartensia recede into the shadows. What do you do? I think I would whisper to my friend, I don't think that you should go on with the show this evening. Fake a headache and go to your dressing room and lock yourself there. And then I would go through the wings and out so I could see, because I've heard shrieks from the audience and I think that maybe somehow, how did she get from there to here already? But I would go out into the hall and try and figure out where and what that disturbance was. And then seeing Mr. Turner, I guess, in the process, kind of want to meet up with him again. Yeah, let's have that moment. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Turner, your role is now seven to nine. You will successfully dispatch the snake. Um, I have control over the scene, so I might just say that you, you're going to dispatch the snake. And I think the complication here is just going to be quite simply that it's chaos in the, in the audience, right? Because um, the snake lashes out, maybe you drop the box, you take your sword, you know, your, the, your, your ornamental blade or whatever that you carry with you, and you slice it, you kill it, and, but there's just like chaos, people are running and going crazy and stuff, right? And that's when Willoughby runs out and at this point, Will it be you hear a snapping, snap, snap, snap. And you see the grand chandelier above, the ropes holding it in place are unfurling rapidly. And they're gonna drop the chandelier down onto the audience. What do you do, Will it be? At this point, I just see that the chandelier is unraveling. Yeah, it's doing that thing where that... It's, it's spinning fast because sure. of the, you know. Yeah. Sure. Um, can I see her at all amongst the, like, do I have a pair of opera glasses? Can I like see, can I get visual on what I assume is La Hortensia? Yes, she's on stage. Cut the rope? She's on stage. Okay. Yeah. The, the curtain is partially open. You can see her. I yell for the audience to run. I draw my pistol and try to shoot her. Very good. Mr. Turner, the chandelier is coming down. I think you won't be in the way, but it will smash and shatter kind of nearby. You see Willoughby crying out, going for the gun, firing off a shot. What are you doing, Mr. Turner? Um, I would like to try to maybe do a ritual that traps her. Oh, holds her in place. Yeah. So she gets caught. <laughs> I like it. Is this something you can do on the fly, I guess? Is this it? What is, what is the sacrifice you're going to make? Well, I'm thinking if we have um, uh, any of the clues are a part of her, maybe the ring or something, I could sort of do a voodoo doll type thing where I put on the ring oh, and yeah. sort of like just, yeah, like trap her by me being her or something. Like she reflects the the things that I am doing. I like it. Um, I guess it's a perversion of a Christian ritual in the sense that it's almost like a wedding thing, right? <laughs> like, um, I'm here for it. Roll with sensitivity. Let's see how it goes. All righty. And would I be able to take something out of my witch's cupboard? You could have brought it with you, yeah. What would be like a wedding, an altar cloth, perhaps? Yeah, if you have one folded up, I guess you could do that. Yeah, I think an altar cloth is the thing that makes sense here. 
So let's do the dice first, then we'll do the scene. Sure. All right. And if you mark that cloth, you can take an advantage. Yeah. Ah, there we go, 13. Nice. You get your bonus as well. The bonus is quite simply that Willoughby knows what's going on. So go ahead and just describe the ritual and then I'll describe how Willoughby knows that La Hortensia is vulnerable. Okay. As the glass shatters and sprays up, we go into like bullet time, <laughs> slow mo type thing. And I uh, take the ring out of like a, a breast pocket or something and put my hand up very like theatrically like this to her so she sees what's happening. Cause I think part of the ritual is her understanding what is happening and believing it. And I put the, the ring on and maybe I'm even mouthing marriage vows as I do it. And she can maybe even like read my lips. And as soon as I put it on, I like snap my arms to my side and then she like mirrors it as well. Willoughby, you get your shot off, it misses, but you can see what Mr. Turner's doing and you can see that she's trapped. She can't leave the stage. She, what, so what do you do? Between me yelling in a crowded theater, essentially run or fire or whatever, it, I, and that plus the gunshots, I have to assume that people are fleeing and probably will make it to safety before the chandelier actually crashes. Oh, the chandelier around. came down already. Yeah. It came yeah, down already. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. if people got squished, then that's just how it is. Yeah. Then um, I think that I move to the stage. I think that she is frozen. I think that I move to her and I get face to face or at least looking up at her say so much of your family is gone and I look down at Obert's knife that's still in my hand and I attempt to murder her with it I think that I just run her clean through as a pirate would I think that this lady's tried to kill me numerous times. I have no time for it. Mr. Janadias, do you open the door and go inside? I do. You see your daughter being feasted upon by a man, but a man who clearly has the look of the boy, of the vampire boy, but he's choosing to look like a man in this dream realm. What was your die result? Uh, nine. Nine. Tell me about oh, the no, daughter. Sorry, uh, that was, it was a disadvantage. So that was eight. Tell me about the daughter. Uh, her name was Calliope, and she was his first child. How does it make you feel to see her laying there in a pool of her own blood? He knows that she died of an illness relatively later in life and relatively peacefully, so he knows that it's not real, but he can't help but react to seeing her like this for the first time in literally centuries. What do you do? He, he is going to rush the man. You rush the man and you find yourself within centimeters of him face to face and you can't move any further. And he says, blood dripping from his mouth. Even as we are here, even as we are speaking in this place, 
I have reached back across time. And I have changed things for you. You're lying. Perhaps. And yet, the memory of her is already slipping away, is it not? He won't dignify it with an answer, even though it is. Theodora likes you very much. That won't save her. Or it you. pains her. It pains her that she will have to destroy Hargrave House at some point. It doesn't pain me at all that I will see your end. You are simply the next in a long line of people who have tried to end me. And the first to succeed, I swear it. The cult of the pig. Drew, Mok demands a sacrifice of blood. What does the cult offer him? Describe it. The mud pit in this ritual room, um, several of the, the stronger members of the cult will get in and have uh, tusks strapped to their face and thus will begin a uh, rather gruesome battle to uh, not necessarily the death, but by the end of it, uh, the weakest among them is sacrificed to mock. Willoughby, La Retensia, falls to her knees on stage, supporting herself with her one hand. And she says, you have taken everything from me. You have taken everything from me and you have won. And so do it. Yes, La Hortensia, you will die by my hand. But in this case, I think it fitting you lead this world as did your meals. And I take Obert's knife, having positioned myself behind her and run her clean across the throat. Figs Pigs is resolved. Mr. Turner, okay. you know what are you yeah. doing? I would like to, uh, so remind me, these, those people did also, uh, they were also servants of Mock, right? Obert was. We don't know about the rest of the family. Okay. Well, just for because I'm the way I am, I <laughs> I want to make as she's bleeding out. I want to make some of the same markings to Mock around her so that Mock sees the failure, and so that maybe she'll be. Um, you know, suffer even more pain in after death at a god's hand. Very good. Mr. Jadius, you find yourself back in your room with Greco and Theodora. Theodora says, I detect a melancholy, Mr. Genadios. What is making you sad? You know very well. Hmm. 
And I think he's going to rise from the bed and withdraw a dagger from beneath his pillow. Greco says, there's no call for that here. It's time for you to awaken. And you do. You're in your bed, alone. But I'm giving you a mastermind clear. And that mastermind clue is... Hmm. On your nightstand, there is a small sapphire. A small sapphire ring, or a ring with a sapphire on it. You don't remember it being there before, but it's there now. What do you do? He is going to sweep it off of his nightstand and, and not care where it lands. Indeed. So it passes the night phase. I would uh, love at the very last end of that night phase to use my person Friday skill to pop up and knock on Alexander's door because currently Willoughby is drenched in blood. I and I just it. want that to be the end of his <laughs> Very good, very good. I like it. It's good. So let me note that. And I think also this will be the first time Willoughby has seen Alexander just broken. Yeah, it's good. I like that it's conditioned, in fact. I was trying to think of a condition to give you, but broken feels like a good one based off losing the memory of your daughter, your firstborn. I think working for such an unforgiving and removed employer, that kind of like callous coldness is definitely rubbing off on Willoughby and it just turned into a murdering psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Let's go to the dawn phase. You have resolved the threat, so we get to take rewards. Let's take a look at the rewards. Uh, one of the rewards was the knife, but you've already got that. <laughs> so we'll just skip that for now. Um, the two other named rewards are a large baking peel with the shape of a pig carved into it, a holy symbol of mock, you have to describe it, but then you get to add it to your quarters. And if you take this one, I unmark the mask of the pig, meaning it can be used again. You take outside the, of the threat right mm -hmm, it becomes yeah. a i see yeah. and that's if somebody takes the holy symbol yes mm -hmm. i mean i'll i wouldn't mind a holy symbol to prefer <laughs> uh we also have just the regular a memento from the investigation somebody else defines it you add it to your personal quarters so which do you all want If there are no takers, I'm happy for the baking peel. I'm sure that there will be some moment in which I can come around a corner and someone will run face first into it or something. <laughs> you have a baking peel with a, a pig carved into the wood. I will take just a generic one. You have to just name another player to describe it or me. Um, Jason. Um, I'm trying to think of all, all of the figs and coming back into that. I think I 
Um, I'm trying to remember, the, I think it was Dr. Tagore who spoke to the boy rag, right? The street urchin last time. So I don't know if that's a thing necessarily, but I will say that, I'm trying to think what other connections you might've had. Let me take a look at the thing. Come up with something good. I'm going to give you Come back to it in a moment. Give me a moment, uh, Mr. Turner. Are you taking the, are you taking the uh, the holy symbol? Yes. Uh, describe it and yeah, describe it and then um, add it to your personal quarters. And mask the pig is back on the table. I think it's a, a pagan symbol for success and synchronicity. So it's. it's success kind of looks like a pagan or a, a, a pig's head already and then synchronicity is the wavy line so I think it's like imposed over that success symbol good and for you Alexander I'm going to give you a perfectly preserved pig's head. It is stuffed and mounted like a trophy. Right on. Thanks. Do what you will with that. So rewards are done. On questions. You are both, you're all getting the first two because you did answer a question and you did resolve a threat. Let's talk about Echoes in the Night. Mr. Genadios, did you do one or experience one? Uh, I don't think I hit that, nope. Did you secretly show a vulnerable side to someone? Uh, I was aiming for that with Willoughby finding him broken. Oh yeah, I like that. And did you let someone touch you and then make them pay a price for doing so? Uh, it didn't really work out, no. Mr. Turner. Did you experience an echo in the night? I tried to with the symbols at the end. Yeah. The same you, ritual symbols. Yeah, you slipped that in. That was good. Did you have a face-to-face -face encounter with the dark entity? I don't think so. Yeah, this time you didn't. That's, that's unusual. Did you counsel someone using your supernatural affinities as the basis for that advice? No, I should have I shouted I should have spouted lore about that ectoplasm, but I didn't. <laughs> And Willoughby, did you experience an echo in the night? Uh, everybody in the dressed in their finest, both at the opera and in the ritual room as they were shedding all of their clothing, was my attempt at that. I also kind of had a pirate tie through, but I don't think I can echo <laughs> to, to other scenes. Uh, did you have a, that's good, yeah. Did you have a scene showing your secret private life in London? The actress I knew. From. Yes, I like that you brought that in. Yeah, that was really good. We, I, can, I think we should explore it more, but you can take it for now. Did you subtly express sexual desire for your employer in the way you dress them or serve them? Nope. We're, we're at a bit of an, odd ends these past few days. Indeed. All right, let's continue on. Um, oh, actually, I do have to resolve a move. I'd like to take the opera glasses for memory of oh, his sure. servant. And then um, I will leave them for Alexander next to the uh, bedside table. In case you need to look for that thing that you hit off your table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look for the ring again. Uh, you could add the opera glasses to your uh, personal quarters, um, Alexander and Willoughby, you get to mark XP. Um, also mark new Dawn questions if you wish, new elective ones. 
And do we have any jazz mask right now that needs to be done? Yes, I've got, I don't think I did mine yet, right? The yep. narrate a flashback to your young childhood that shows part of your initiation into the coven. Oh, and name the coven. Oh, oh interesting. Damn. The name of the coven, yeah. Who were defeated? Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I like the idea of the the last flashback that we had. I was taken into the uh, stagecoach of my uh, the person that took me in after I left my house. And I think we see that same person in like a, a manner and it's sort of like an eyes wide shut deal where at, at night all these people are arriving and all these like repressed uh, things of society are, are taking place so like orgies and food and decadence and all those things are happening um, and I think my initiation though is taking place further down below um, and maybe just for fun we'll have like a spiral staircase that, that I go down um, that mimics that that spiral clue to go down to the coven and um, I think the the ritual though is oh the the ritual is I I show the the what I can do which is probably how they learned that I was that why they were afraid of me is I actually make love in front of them uh, to an angel similar to what will be will be uh, witnessed and I think it probably has the opposite effect in in that I'm trying to show them how powerful I am. And I think it, it works to so much of a degree that that's why they want to des destroy me in the future. That's what ultimately destroyed them too. Like in the, like it was that power that got them, right? Like mm -hmm. Ultimately. It's good. I love it. And I think that's it for Janice Mask. And so let's take a look at the tracker. Uh, I think we're just going straight to the day phase at this point. You are back down to two, uh, two active threats, which means we get a new one. I'm going to introduce it, and I think we'll just call it a session after I introduce it. This is an unpublished threat. It's a new one coming out soon. It is the seamstress. I'll note a lot of these notes for you after we're done, so you don't have to worry about writing too much down. You can just pay attention for now. Among academics, Sir Richard Harlow was a well-regarded, if eccentric, scholar of folklore, known for his vivid storytelling and far-fetched theories. To Hargrave House, he was a trusted friend whose expertise in fey lore and magic proved invaluable on numerous occasions. The news of his sudden death comes as a shock, even more the manner of his passing. Sir Harlow's body was found at his desk, strangely hollowed and preserved, wrapped head to toe in delicate silver thread. What's more, he was set to present a summary of his life's work at the Blue Feather Society, a private salon where curious minds explore the more esoteric subjects not discussed in formal institutions. Sir Harlow was convinced that creatures of the Fey realm or the other crowd had infiltrated London and he supposedly had new evidence to support his theory. Ms. Abigail Walker, chair of the Blue Feather Society reveals that Sir Harlow had been courting a Ms. Hazel Beaumont a mysterious seamstress whose magnificent fashion designs and apparently her company have proved irresistible to a number of London's artistic and academic elite. Each one of her suitors have also vanished, though their bodies remain missing. Who has the highest sensitivity among you? Definitely me, there. I think. I have three. Indeed. Yeah. Mr. Turner, Hargrave House is familiar enough with fey magic to recognize its manifestations in the manner of Sir Harlow's death. 
How do you know that Ms. Beaumont is no human, but a dangerous fey creature in disguise? And have if other we, people have ideas, you can jump into Have we seen those. the person before? Uh, Ms. Beaumont, well, you can, yeah, you can add that detail in if you want, sure. Okay, or how about um, outside of her, uh, her residence or, or whatever. Or her shop. The, yeah, the, um, it runs rampant with like uh, different plants and like it, they, the plants grow at like five times the pace and work to like encircle the building and stuff. And the, the gardeners are working overtime, trimming, trimming, trimming. So her shop is, has this growth, this magical growth, good. And so that opens up some questions and opportunities. There are three questions and three opportunities, any one of which can be pursued. The simplest question is complexity four, and it is, how is the creature ensnaring her victims? And it allows you to resolve the threat by allowing a hunter to be lured by the seamstress as bait, then capturing or destroying her, straightforward. Second question is, what is the creature's true name? Resolve the threat by learning the creature's true name, getting power over her, and dismantling the binding rituals which sustain her in the human realm. Fey names can take many forms. A fleeting series of images, a song or poem, a word unknown to human tongues, and other things. That's complexity six. And complexity eight is the final question, what does the creature truly want? In this case, you can resolve the threat by striking a bargain with the creature in accordance with ancient Fey customs. And that is where we are at with the seamstress, which we may pick up, uh, which you can do next time. And we have a new mask here as well, the mask of glamour. So I think with that said, we'll end the session a little early and go straight to stars and wishes. I just have a, a quick question before yeah. that. Uh, the custom move for a character, uh, how, how do we go about doing that? Um, oh, uh, for your advancement? Yes. Yeah, we just make it up <laughs> and we, we make one up. Um, the best thing to do is between sessions, just pitch me your idea and we'll work it out. So. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, let's do Stars and Wishes. Um, whoever wants to go first, take it away. I really liked the um, flashback for Drew with the, uh, I thought it was really like a fun way to play into a, like a cliche of the, the artist throwing themselves off the balcony, but I really specifically liked that the statue uh, looked the other way. And uh, that's how presumably the, the veins were filled with blood as well. Um, that was really fun. And I really liked Willoughby killing uh, La Horent, the that person I can't pronounce probably. <laughs> La Hortensia. Yeah, uh, killing them the way that the victims were killed. And then um, I really liked the overall unseen um, switching back and forth between it, what felt like very synchronous and interesting and cool. And wishes I want to be destroyed in a cool way. <laughs> You're very close. So. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I wanted to mock the god. I was like, maybe Drew will prevent me from being destroyed with his move, or maybe I just pissed off a god. Lots of options to get messed up. You do have the mask of the pig now, though, at your disposal. So that's you know you have a little bit of extra like rope, you know, that you didn't have before by picking up by by taking the holy symbol. So. Um, fantastic. Who wants to go next? I will. Um, I really, I enjoyed our exploration, uh, our exploration of Cremon Gardens just as a player. I felt the way that we kind of all broke up and did our own thing is a nice counterbalance to sometimes we just need to do 
as many vulnerable moves as we need in a game. And it, it's a different way to play it out. So it's not necessarily that role playing in pairs, but kind of just the exploration of that was fun. Um, also, I got my portrait done, which was cool. <laughs> uh, I also really liked the way all of the, the mastermind clues led to also her, instead of showing up at the opera, like I thought ended up infiltrating Alexander's walkabout. Um, that was really, uh, it was a good twist and I think really well done. Plus we got to learn more about his character, which is fulfilling a wish from last game. <laughs> uh, wishes for what's gonna happen next time around. I think that it's come to a head and Alexander and Willoughby are gonna have a fight. <laughs> maybe verbal, maybe just passive aggressive, could be anything. But I think that they're on opposite ends and it's going to come to a head. <laughs> Go ahead, Drew. My stars were, uh, I was also going to say, uh, Willoughby dispatching La Hortensia in the way that they did was, that was spot on. Um, I really enjoyed the fact that the box of snakes came back. It's following us across games never know when we're going to open something and there's snakes inside it's my go-to <laughs> no, it was good and also i liked that the uh i mean whenever we go somewhere and there's lots of people it, it tends to go really bad and it did that again those poor opera goers and uh, so that was just really fun to to watch uh willoughby and and uh, ives take care of that um, I really enjoyed the uh, twisted thing that happened to Alexander here, his, his memories being corrupted. That was a lot of, uh, not fun, but cool. And uh, wishes, I, I'm looking forward to that confrontation from Willoughby. That's going to be pretty good. And uh, Hey, if, if Ives wants to become a follower of, of Alexander, that, that could definitely be interesting. Indeed, indeed. Uh, my stars are, um, I really love the Cremorne Garden sequence as well. I was very happy with this sort of more casual pace of it. I enjoyed Fraser's experimentation with, um, <laughs> <laughs> different ways of getting the fish creature to like, you know, it, it's interesting because we usually see Dr. Tagore behaving that way, right? It's usually Dr. Tagore who's doing the like experiments, right? But it's kind of, so it's kind of fun to see uh, Mr. Turner like being experimental, you know, uh, that was kind of, that was amusing. And uh, I thought the scene with Greco and Albertina and Alexander was quite good um, and intriguing and um yeah i also another star for the um i liked the sort of action heavy sequence at the end at the opera house that was a lot of fun um willoughby's ruthlessness was really intriguing i thought willoughby was going to take a chance to spare la Hortensia when la Hortensia literally got on her knees and like said you know do it but did not spare la Hortensia. and so that was pretty uh, good and shocking and um yeah, I, and I like the little moment with with with, G, with Whistler and and Willoughby as well. That was kind of fun. Uh, this is the James Whistler from history, by the way. <laughs> he really lived on Chain Walk at, at, for a time in London. Um, and for wishes, uh, this particular this brand new threat, the seamstress threat, it is all about. It's particularly all about fashion. Like fashion is kind of the big theme of it. So I think there's a lot of fun things with both Willoughby and Alexander, especially to sort of like get in there and do fashion stuff, you know? Um, it's a little bit like Sally No Face in that way. Um, so it'll be kind of fun to pick up on some of those themes that we got to start exploring with in the Sally No Face thread, kind of pick them back up with this more magical sort of uh, vibe. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, and then also I'm just, I think we're like two sessions away from, from, from wrapping up the mastermind, getting the mastermind threat going like like for good so that'll be kind of fun to see if that plays out that way as well so yeah. 
I have one more bonus star before we go, because now that I know that Jason's move is a box of snakes, all I can picture is those times when he says role play, except snakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because like, I just ran Bruno with Bay on Wednesday and uh, one of those characters reached into a corpse's pocket and there was a viper in the pocket. So yeah. <laughs> well, the, that's why I was like, I have a small child over there. <laughs> yeah, you, you, knew, so, you knew there was a snake in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, not a, maybe not a snake, but I knew something there was trouble. not yeah. good was in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also really like the, the, yeah, like how ruthless Hargrave House has become across yeah. this. Like, and Willoughby being the through line this time. I think we've all been independently quite cruel, but Willoughby being particularly cruel this yeah. session where it's like you took everything from me like yes also now i'm going to kill you and then i'm like end your gods <laughs> the improv way to murder yes and now i kill you yeah. well it's wow. been said a few times in other places but it's true and, and it's true which is the the protagonists in the between are they're protagonists but they're not heroes right like they're not like good necessarily um, some of them kind of can be. I think the fact totem can be in a lot of circumstances, and I think the American can be in a lot of circumstances. But for the most part, Har Hargrave House, they're protagonists, but they're not heroic. And I think that's important, you know, for like how it plays out. So, I mean, even just like they're like the vessel and the mother and the undeniable. I mean, especially the undeniable, but really also the mother and the vessel too. I mean, they're kind of evil, right? Like, they, you know, like they do bad things. And, um, and in a lot of cases, they're they're worse than the threats, right? And so it's kind of interesting that that they kind of plays out that way sometimes, like where we see Hargrave House is like the the threat, like you are the threat to Theodora, right? Like you know, if Theodora's plan wasn't so ghoulish, you know, her motivations might be totally noble for all we know, right? Um, so it's just kind of interesting how the the moral, the morality of it all kind of like shakes out as it's intriguing. But. Yeah, like when we got the coven, I killed more people than the cult. Probably right, yeah, yeah, killed. exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like it's, 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 it's very like, it's very that, right? Um, and the interesting thing about like the mastermind, the way the mastermind, like the Theodora mastermind especially is we haven't gotten into her motivations too much, but I think we will. But like her motivations are not necessarily unsympathetic, right? And so that's that's intriguing to me. You know, it's like there, there. It's you can sympathize with her to some degree for why she's doing what she's doing, as we'll learn. But um, and, and so that kind of makes you. It kind of makes you guys the bad guys, right? In some way. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, anything else before we go? Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.